Hello there, welcome to Inquiring Minds. My name is Doug and I'm back with another Pen Resurrection Sunday video. This one is called Bag O' Pens 2 because I've got another bag, O Pens, from the same person. I had not only opened and triaged all of the pens in the big bag O Pens that Janice gave me a couple of weeks ago, then I got another smaller bag O Pens that she had rummaged up around her house. And the hits just keep coming. Thank you, Janice. Let's open this bag of pens and see what's inside. I have no clue on what this is. Uh, I've sort of looked at them from the outside and there's some tags on them, but let's find out what we've got. So here's one with a tag attached. And the tag says, Vintage Wherever Fountain Pen, $15. And it does say, Wherever on the clip and it's got lots of scratching on the plastic body any imprints other than scratches no imprints just the wherever there it's a slip cap open that up and a very interested semi hooded nib that stands to own a clear plastic feed i saw a parker with a clear plastic feed that i resurrected a while back and the barrel unscrews it's a cartridge converter pen so this must be from the 1960s or something like that. That looks like a very large bore. I'm not sure what uh, cartridge would fit in that. We'll have to give it a try. Let's you know, get my kit of cartridges and parts out here. All kinds of different. There's a Schaefer that pierces. That's a little bit too small for that. There's a Parker. Parker, yeah, the Parker just fits. Of course, this is an old cartridge. Yeah, that fits. Yeah, that's a little bit split too. Wonder if it's, yeah, it's way too long. So I need a Parker short. Here's a Parker short. Yeah, that one's split too. Let's see whether the Chinese standard, Chinese standard bore fits. Nope, it's way bigger than anything I've got. That's what she said. What's this? This is a Schaefer. It's a Schaefer. Yeah, that's a Schaefer. What about Platinum? Well, platinum might fit. Here's a Pilot. That doesn't fit. Cross won't fit. Lammy. Let's try a Lammy cartridge. Here's a Lammy. They seem to fit, but I'm splitting those old cartridges by doing that. So it must be some kind of proprietary wherever whatever cartridge for that pen. Now that could be cleaned up. I bet it would write. I wouldn't eyedropper that with that metal thing on the bottom. So if anybody knows what cartridge a wherever pen from what looks like the 1960s would take, please let me know. Let's go to the bag again. Well, here's a, a part. I have no idea what it's from. It's got old sack on it. And an ammonite feed. Well, that goes in my parts bin. There's another tag attached to a pen. And Schaefer fountain pen green, 10 bucks. This is the Schaefer flat top style student pen, plastic slip cap. I've got a number of these. They take Schaefer cartridges. Is there anything in it? Yeah, there's an old Schaefer cartridge in it. This is a fine nib. They came in fine and medium. This is the first pen I ever owned, something very similar to this. In fact, I've got one. This is one that I purchased on eBay and I cleaned it up. And it has ink in it and it writes every time, even though I leave it for months and months. Uh, and it's a medium nib, it writes beautifully. This is exactly, other than the color, the pen that I started my fountain pen journey with when I was like in grade seven or grade eight. That would have been in the year 19... So we won't visit that. That can be cleaned up and fixed. So that'll be over here in the to, to restore, to clean up bin. Put this back on my tray. And we have another tag that says vintage enduro fountain pen, eight bucks as is. Let's see if there's an enduro in here. Well, here's another Schaefer's. This one says, says Schaefer's on it. Schaefer's made in Australia. So this is an Australian Schaefer. It's a slip cap. Ah, with a Triumph style nib. Look at that. 
wonder what model this is. I'll have to do some research. And it has a sack protector, so a touchdown kind of filling system, but it's not a touchdown. So how do you fill this? This is odd. I'm going to pull this. Oh, yeah, that sack is stuck on there. I don't understand how this works. Does anybody have an idea? This is weird. Wait a minute. Oh, yeah. No, there it is. It is a touchdown. <laughs> I couldn't see that blind cat because it was screwed down so tight. Let's do this. Well, let's do this. Let's open that blind cap up and see whether we have... Where's the hole? There. And we don't have any suction. But we know we have slot screw at the bottom of that to hold the blind cap on. <laughs> yep, there we go. There's the gasket. And the touchdown sleeve looks pretty good. Yeah, it probably needs a new gasket. Pretty mashed. What we want to look at is the barrel. Yeah, that uh, seal right there needs to be replaced. It looks like there's two in there. I looked at it with my loop. And that's not two, that's just the, the bottom ring. That uh, ring needs to come out of there, and a new ring needs to be introduced. I've got one that uh, was in the Schaefer Snorkel Clipper that I just replaced with an, a thicker one, because that uh, vacuum wasn't working. Might try the original Schaefer in that pen and see whether I can get it working again. Well, let's put these parts back together again so we don't lose them gasket on the screw and then put the sleeve on first put your goddamn sleeve on first P D G D S O F if you please and there we go just lightly tight okay so that is a fixable snorkel Schaefer Triumph nib made in Australia oh we've got a crack in the barrel right there so I might be able to fix that with a little CA glue again you don't use CA glue on these things, generally with barrel cracks and things like that, because they will, will tend to eat the plastic and they, um, they leak. But there's no ink to leak through here. All there is is pressure. So maybe I can get that crack sealed so that it is stable. And we'll see whether we can get that nib off of there as well. That sack might need to be replaced. You see, I was sort of stretching it out, so it's actually stuck inside there. So it feels pliable but I would replace it when I've got it open. So I'm going to order a kit for this with the proper seals and so forth and see whether I can fix this pen. It's got a couple of issues, a couple of deep gouges, uh, but I think it's fixable. So we'll put that in the fixable pile. And here's one that hasn't got a label on it. And I have no idea what this is. It's a slimline pen. It looks like from the 1960s. 70s, something like that. Yeah, it's got some Chinese writing on it. Chinese. If anybody knows what that says, I'm betting it says Hero 915. I'll have to look that up. There's nothing on the clip. Slip cap. Oh, look at that. What the hell is that? What the hell is that? <laughs> I don't know what the hell that is. What the hell is that? Don't put your lips on it! Well, don't put your lips on that, kids. It's got some kind of imprint. Looks like it's got a penis on it right there. It's uh, the Penis Pen Company. Don't let a poorly drawn forehead penis ruin your spring break. Hi, I'm Ross McMichael. And with my new instructional DVD, Draw Forehead Penises the Ross McMichael Way, I'll show you how to draw a perfect forehead penis every time. It's a calligraphy nib of some sort. That's what you call an extreme architect. That'll be cool to see if I can get it writing. Let's open this up and see what it is. Ah, it's a squeeze filler, aerometric. And it's got some Chinese characters there as well. I bet you that says hero. I wonder if that comes off. It moves a little bit. I think I'm going to soak this. It has some old crud in there. I don't know what that is. But we'll soak this whole thing and see what we can do with that very interesting nib. No idea what this is. A Chinese gargantuan nib for calligraphy. Very cool. 
So that's going in the to-do pile as well. These are all salvageable pens here. Now, this is interesting. Here's a celluloid pen from, I'd say, the 1920s, late 20s, early 30s, through mid-30s. It's a lever filler. Crunch, crunch, crunch. Just like I like them. It's got a ball clip. It's all bent out of shape and a lot of brassing. Gold's gone. It's faceted, and it's got a melt mark there. Some gouges. Cap band is all brassed. So is the lever. But it's faceted. So it, I'm not, I'm not going to count the facets, but it's very interesting. So unscrew this. There we go. Oh, it's a little bit warped. Celluloid warps with age. Shrinks and warps. And that looks like a steel nib. It says Durium. D-U-R-I-U-M-4. Ebonite feed. It's broken. And the nib is sprung but that might be fixable let's see whether it comes apart no i have to soak that to see whether it'll come apart and what kind of sack that might take but um, some very interesting celluloid there and it's gone thick right there so i've got a feeling it's that pressure bar has rusted inside there and the celluloid has expanded because i don't think that pen was that shape so that's a maybe. That's a maybe. I don't know. It'd be interesting to get it apart anyway. So there we go. Five pens from the second bag of pens from Janus. You might see some of these in future resurrections. Thanks for watching. I made this.